Hello again. In the previous video, we have presented the 3D frame that we are going to create, and we have chosen the physical groups that we are going to use. And we have shown this table, which I have printed for myself, and I have the sheet of paper by my side. Maybe you can do that as well. Stop the video for a while, make a screenshot and print it, and maybe you will use it when creating the model. So we go in GM Saphir, and I have already prepared the geometry by introducing eight points and eight lines. We can view the script here with the coordinate of the points. The structure is four by six meters in the plan view. Uh, the vertical dimension is three meters. And I have given the fourth coordinate of these points, the value 0.5. That means that I will have finite elements with a length of 0 0.5 meters near these points. So what we are going to do now is to create the physical groups. And I will start by the points. And the first group I create is fixed supports. And I select this point and this one, type E. And the properties are block constrain. I want to fix all degrees of freedom at these two nodes. And update. I create another physical group based on points. And I will call it free supports. I select this point and this one, type E. And I also have block constraint in the X, Y, Z, zero, they are fixed. Theta X, I don't fix it. Theta Y is not fixed. Theta Z will remain fixed. And maybe also the warping, add update. So I can view here, blocks, and OK, the color is not the best you could have. But if you look carefully, we get what we wanted. Now I create the physical groups based on curves. The first one I will create is the one I called columns. I have to select my four columns. and type E. Now, the properties are here. These are the options. But I know I will need some materials. And the materials have to be created. So I start with new material definition. And that will be uh, carbon steel. It's steel EC3EN. I will start with the one that has 235 megapascal as a yield strength, and I will call it S235M. M reminds me that this is the name of a material. Add update, so it appears now. And although I will not use this other material for this physical group, I will right away create the new material, another material, new material definition. I change the yield strength, that's a three. Five, five. The name is S three five five M. New material name. Add an update, and now in the list I see that these two materials have been created. I will now create local axis, and the one I need for these columns will have the y axis in the direction given by this vector this is 0 1 0 that's the direction of the local y axis given in the global system of coordinate there are op the other options i could revert the x axis but it's not requested here you can also define the local axis by angles but i prefer personally to use this option and I have to give it a name. I will call it 
LAX010 add so this axis has been created now I will create a new one which will have a y direction 001 so it's vertical it will be used for the beams of course and the name will be local axis 001 add update so here is the list of the two local axes which I have created so now I can to this physical group add the beam section type so I have to give first the name of the TEM file that's HEB 400.tem which I have created previously and the material name is S235M add update and now I have to allocate the local axis here beam section local axis and I will use the local axis LAX010 add update so I can close this box I can view the materials okay I see the name of the TEM files and the name of the material that's correct clean and I can view the local axis and they are not defined why and the problem was that I did not click twice when I allocated this local axis LAX010 to this physical group in the add update button I have to click twice at least on my computer but now they are allocated and I see that the y-axis is pointing in the direction which I want it so I can clean it now I will create second physical group based on curves which I will call short beams I select this beam and this beam E now I can allocate the beam section type that's an IPE 600 IPE 600 the material is correct so I click add update and I do it twice and now I can allocate the local axis and that's LX001 and I click twice here okay now I want to check what I did view materials now I have my IP 600 with the S235M okay and I can check my local axis I can check that the local Y axis is vertical now another physical group based on curves that's the one that I will call long beams and it comprises these two beams type E I can allocate the beam section type the name is IP 600 but the material now is S 355M add update and I can allocate the local axis that's zero LX001 correct add update and twice close and I can check first materials okay this IPE 600 with the S355 correct and now the local axis the local y is also pointing up that's okay now I need the physical groups based on curves which are used for the loads and the first load I decided to call it load 1-1 you may have a better ID and it's to be used for the dead load of the columns type 
E after I select it and what I will allocate is a uniformly distributed load on beams. It's multiplied by the function F1 and the value is minus 1550 newton per meter in the Z direction at update. Now another physical group based on curves for the loads and this will be load 1, 2. It is made of the beams type E. The function if F1 is used but now the dead load, the dead weight of these beams is 1220 sorry 220 newton per meters add update so I can view the loads let's check okay I see that I obtained what I desired I have now three other physical groups based on curves for the life load type Q so I create physical group called load 21 it is made of the short beam on the up side of the wind E and the load now is multiplied by the function F load and I have Fy equal 2500 newton per meter that's the wind load and I have a life load of minus 2000 and update now another group called load 2 2 this is the short beam on the lee side of the wind type E and the load will be in the y direction for the wind 1900 newton per meter with the same vertical life load add update and finally the last group for the loads is load 2 3 it is to be applied to the two long beams type E and the load is zero in the y direction and vertically we assume minus 5000 newton per meters at update so we can view the loads and check that we have everything we need we really see that on the beams for example we have two loads the one multiplied by f1 and the one multiplied by f load f1 f load f1 f load and we can check that the values are correct we check the parameters normally they should be okay the name maximum displacement precision uh, time print i will print every second and I will make a static analysis it's pure and R with a comeback of one second and the time step would be let's say four seconds print is standard okay I have to make the mesh and we will check here that we got the mesh done it's a 1D mesh because we mesh curves so the mesh has been made here with 64 nodes and 72 elements that seems to make sense and everything is ready we can create the input file and the input file has been created let's check that here are the G4S and the GEO file and here is the IN file and it has been created just right now so it's okay I will run the case here with my input file run and it's running how long I don't know I have no idea I chose the values of the loads and, and the spans and the sections a little bit at random 
without paying too much attention. Okay, the structure survived during a little bit more than 32, 33 minutes. Let's have a look on the results in diamond file. The frame is here. Here are the nodes, the elements, the section types, the supports, okay, the local axis, yeah, okay. Now the loads, first the load F1, it's a distributed load, okay, we should change the scale, it's better. So we see the load on the beams and the load on the columns, and now we want to see the load multiplied by F load, it's a distributed load here, and we see that we have a different value we have different value for the vertical load on the beams and we have also slightly different values for the horizontal load coming from the wind and i can plot for example the bending moment after four seconds eight twelve 16 20 i see the bending moment is zero here it's not zero here I have the continuity in the frame in all directions. I did not use any relax, maybe the displaced configuration with a factor, let's say 50. This is the displaced configuration. So let's go and check what we have in the output file. and we have steel in the sanding branch so this is this explains why the simulation stopped at this point where exactly it happens i don't spend time to watch because the purpose of this video is to show you how to use gm sapphire it's not to analyze the behavior of this particular frame i hope you enjoyed thank you